people probably have stuff to say because we're in a new uh, season. Uh, you've already said that before. Let's see. Your dad pulls a flower out of his pocket and gives it to you. A blossom for my little blossom? He tucks it behind your ear. I'm 99.99% sure that isn't poisonous. But let me know if you get a weird rash or anything. <laughs> Alright, this has something to say. It's pouring rain and everyone's trying to stay dry under the grass-roofed halapus. I don't know that word. Everyone except Dis. Off in the distance, over the, at the wall near the sports ball field, he's definitely skulking. If I had perception 15 or greater, I could quietly follow him. Uh, I'm not going to tell on him, so I will just ignore him, I think. When you glance back again, Dis is gone. He's right there. What are you talking about? Um... I think if we had his friendship higher, he would eventually tell us about his explorations. Uh, as it is, though, I think we need to get our perception higher. Um, I think perception, we do build up a little bit doing deliveries. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do another delivery, and then we'll be done with our popularity. It's been a while, but it's time to attend a meeting of the Secret Fun Times Club. Mars started the SFC years ago when you were little kids. Tangent and Tammy agreed to join at the time, but then you all got busy with other things and forgot about it, and then Tammy died. You meet in an unused conference room in command, which Mars says is perfect for a secret club. Club President Mars brings the meeting to order. Tang, Vice President of Writing Down Secrets, records the meeting notes on her holopalm. Uh, as Vice President of Fun Ideas, it was your job to come up with something for the club to do today. You chose making friendship bracelets and brought all the supplies you'll need. Today, Mars announces that we're going to make friendship bracelets, and I have an even better idea. We're going to sell them to people for kudos. That isn't really how kudos are supposed to be used, but Mars is hard to argue with sometimes. The three of you spend the afternoon braiding bracelets out of recycled bits of wire and bright plastic packing straps. Your hearts aren't really into it, though. All three of you know that Tammy would have been much better at this than you. Making friendship bracelets was one of her favorite things. She was always giving them to people and didn't expect anything in return. It's eventually Mars who calls the meeting early. She takes all of your misshapen bracelets and looks at them dubiously. I don't know if people will want to trade their kudos for these, but I'll do my best. I'll put the kudos in the club treasury. Meeting adjourned. You ask Tangent if she thinks Mars is actually going to sell them. I think so, Tang tells you, but the club doesn't even have a treasury. She'll probably just keep the kudos for herself. She doesn't seem to care. Alright. Something like that? Sure. Nope. Could have gotten to a 16. Oh well. You're having a terrifying, familiar dream. A monster crashing through the walls, unfathomably large, every part of it wriggling and moving and searching for something. It tramples through the colony as you watch helplessly. Time shifts to the wreckage of your home. You're picking through it, looking for something. Tears stream down your dust-covered face as you lift heavy pieces of debris, searching. You wake up shouting, No! But your voice is drowned out by a deafening rumble from the skies outside. The bedroom window is covered in... Water? It's pouring down from the clouds. You guess this must be rain, but you've never experienced it before. There's a bright flash from outside, then another crack and rumble. Thunder. It must be a thunderstorm. It's still the early hours of the morning. You've already almost forgotten your bad dream, but you're too unsettled to go back to sleep yet. The rain beats down on the roof of your quarters, joined now and then with great peals of thunder like the footsteps of an angry beast. Hide under the covers until it's over, run outside and play in the rain, or go to your parents for comfort. Uh, we'll run outside and play in the rain. Ah, that got some rebellion. But it did take off a bit of stress. It's surprisingly warm outside, and the water feels nice hitting your head. Everything smells fresh and damp and wonderful, and the dusty, packed ground has turned to squelchy mud between your toes. 
<laughs> you don't go too far from the door to your quarters, but it's exciting being outside in the dark and watching dramatic streaks of lightning arc down to the hills behind the colony. We made it to Midwet, Mars has something to say. You know, Selene, you're all right, Mars says as you approach. You blink at her, trying to figure out what she means. You're all right, what? As you're stunned silence, Mars toss, laughs and tosses her hair over her shoulder. You're right, she repeats. You actually have good taste, unlike all these other null heads. Ever since we landed, it's been help with this Mars, and don't waste resources on that Mars, it's boring. At least you understand the importance of sophistication. You shoot the breeze with Mars a bit longer. At some point, this skulks out of the living quarters and has to pass by you both, clearly trying not to draw your attention. Ugh, where's he going now? Mars mutters to you, then raises her voice so Dis can hear. Trying to get eaten by aliens, she calls out to Dis. If you die out there, they can't use your body for fertilizer. Don't be a waste. Harsh. Uh, shut up, Mars. Dis is cool. I think Mars likes it when people talk back to her. So, you say it loud enough for Dis to hear. He looks at you with wide eyes before scurrying towards the walls. Huh, Mars says with a little smile. No accounting for taste. She seems to respect that you challenged her. She watches Dis disappear from her sight, then shrugs. Maybe you can get through to him. I've tried, but he doesn't care about contributing to the colony, or being popular, or earning kudos, or anything important. Uh, what do you contribute, Mars? Mars laughs and puts her hands on her hips. I can contrib contribute plenty, and you know it, Selene. People need someone to tell them what to do, don't they? Yeah, dumb ways to die by dancing around in the rain. We were fine. Still nothing from our mom. If your mom already said no, I agree with her, your dad says, without looking up from his work. I know you two disagree about things, but she's still your mom. Uh, nothing new with this. Hold this to your head now, my darling. You hear as you enter the garden looking for Cal. It'll help with the swelling. Cal is sitting with his mother, Auntie Tira, who kneels beside him holding an ice pack to his head. Cal's eyes are a little puffy. He rubs them and sniffs as you approach. Hello, Selene. Tira greets you with a kind smile. Don't worry. Recalcitrants just took a tumble off of something he shouldn't have been climbing on. Mom, Cal complains. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, that sounds like something he'd do. Cal shrugs. I climbed it before and it was fine, he says, not disagreeing with you. It was slippery from the irrigation misters, that's all. Mom always knows how to make it better, he says with a boyish smile, even if I'm old enough to take care of myself. My brave boy, Tira says, stroking his hair. Thanks for humoring me. She looks over to you. Don't let him show off for you, Selene. Ground-based feats of bravery only for the rest of the day. Cal whines and wrinkles his nose. Tira laughs and wraps him in a big motherly hug, rocking him back and forth. Despite his protests, Cal's eyes close in happiness. He really loves his mom. Anything new with Anemone? Uh, nope. Still just liking to run around. And Tang? Uh, nope. Still complaining about her brother. So, yeah, I think it's time we need to get back to class. It's been a while. So we could start up engineering, or we can go back to life sciences. Or we could study humanities. Any opinion, pseudonym? Not seeing one? Oh, I'm gonna go with... Hmm... Life sciences, sure. Tang is absent almost all of this month. Hal explains that Chief Engineer Instance has asked for Tang's help with a few experiments. Because you've judged, you're judged on what you know, not what you prove you've learned in class, many older students choose to skip class and instead get hands-on experience in their field of interest. Tang's been working closely with Instance since she was just a kid. So... This card that we got from Mars costs us a kudos when we use it. So it's a powerful card, but losing a kudo every time kind of sucks. 
but with luck, that'll be the highest score, and therefore we will get that kudo back. And it was. So, it ended up being even. Uh, yeah, gain a bunch more biology, some reasoning. And we are now at late wet. Henge is watching the construction crew build scaffolding for the new engineering pavilion. They're using mushwood, which is so light that one person can easily lift a 10 meter long pole and stack it into place. She points towards them. Human beings are so great, don't you think? Before we landed, this was all just dirty jungle. Now it's civilization. I've been learning about adaptability in writing and biology class. The books say it's what sets us apart from the animals. Like, we don't need fur because we can make warm clothes, and if it's too hot, we can make air conditioners instead. Uh, we've got an option because our biology is 15 or greater. Also, we can sweat. Tang nods vigorously. Yes, also that. I read that not many animals sweat, except humans, and it makes us naturally good in hot places. It's like we're made to be explorers. Together, he watches the foreman puts the blueprints for the scaffolding onto the, floati the floating screens of her holopomp and raises it to the scaffolding to check their progress. I'd like to see an alien do that, Tang says primly. Humans look defenseless and weak, but we're the strongest species in the galaxy. Who else can literally bend reality to their will? Not a stupid alien, that's for sure. She puts one finger on her shin. I'm living proof that humanity is greater than our biology, she says. All of us are, really, with our genetic enhancements. We're the next step in humanity's evolution, from great ape to galactic superspecies. Nothing new from Anemone. Uh, oh, we finally got our biology high enough. He needed 20, so we can use this option. Want to hear a fun nature fact? You recently overheard the children learning how to count by studying hop eyes. Hop eyes have one foot and two tail forks and three stomachs and four eyes. And if you see five of them together, that's lucky, Cal laughs, finishing the mnemonic with you. Wait, how do they find out that hop eyes have three stomachs? I don't want to know. Gal's even more biology and some friendship with Cal. So now when we talk to Cal, there's going to be a new option requiring biology 40. And that'll be the same with all the other characters that once we reach their level 20 option, then new options occur. Same skill, just higher points. All right. Looks like everyone is done. We've covered all that. So let's go back to the ship and do a bit more study. Um, we'll try engineering this time just to mix it up. Professor Hal rubs his hands together as he waits for the class to settle down. He's in a great mood. This must be his favorite subject to teach. Oh, was Mars new? Sorry. <laughs> We'll probably catch it again soon, because it looked like it was a standard, repetitive statement. Uh, if biology and chemistry are the wet sciences, then engineering must be a dry one. But believe me, this class definitely won't be dry. He winks. It's weird. We'll also be learning maths, physics, computing, robotics, architecture, and astronomy. Tangent raises her hand. Will we also learn about nuclear engineering? She asks. Professor Hal nods. Yes, at a beginner level. We'll have an overview of atomic theory and take a field trip to the engine rooms to learn how our ship's nuclear reactor works to power the colony. All right. Um, since we can't get any straights, then we'll just match numbers and colors. All right, another 16 out of 16. Good. So gain some kudos and a lot of good points. The days have been getting shorter, with only the yellow sun barely skimming the horizon. One morning you wake in the darkness, and have to check your holopom to know what time it is. You see a holostream from Mars. Good morning to all my pals, if you can even call it morning. They named it glow season because, like, everything is crazy glowing out there in the dark. I'm staying the heck inside for the next month. What's the point of even going out if you can't see anything? It's going to be a long, boring month. No way, it looks cool out there. You peek outside. The wormhole is the biggest you've ever seen it, like a massive fiery ring in the sky. The planet must be very close to it now. And out in the jungle, something new is taking place. The plants are flowering, glowing. 
uh, iridescent blooms, and everything is full of life. There are strange new sounds and long hooting calls and gurgling roars. After Mars's message is a notice from the council warning everyone to stay safe inside. Tammy's dad and the other surveyors have been called back and the gates closed for the month. There's a tension in the air as if everyone is waiting for something. We reached month 13, glow season, which is a very cool looking month. Let's see if anyone wants to talk. Uh, nope, she's still just talking about running. This is, of course, out here. Uh, this is staring off into the wilderness outside the gates. Feels different, he mumbles. Don't know how, just different. You ask him what he means, but he just shakes his head and stuffs his hands into his pockets. Oh, we got an item here. Anything else? Just our mom. Selene, your mom stops you as you walk by. What are you doing out of quarters? It isn't safe out here. Uh... I'm going to school. She nods with grudging approval. Fair enough, she replies. Stay close to the stratosphere, got it? We don't know what's out there this time of year. As you walk away and are just out of earshot, you hear her mumble, Stars, it is beautiful, though. And everyone else is hiding inside the ships. So, following what we told our mom, we will go to school. Um... I'd like to get some of these perks. Looks like biology is our closest, so might as well study life sciences again. Uh, that's the one we've already read. Tang is absent most of the month. Etc. Get to work. Probably as good as we're gonna get. Good. So we offset the kudos loss. It's daytime when the emergency sirens start up. Well, what passes for day. It's still nearly pitch black except for the eerie green twilight glow on the horizon. You look toward the gates. They're open. Wait, they shouldn't be open. The alert blares out of every speaker in the colony. It's the same one you used for hull breaches and fires, and in space it meant you were supposed to go to the nearest emergency shaft and put on a spacesuit. On Pertumna, it means get to, go to an assembly point and wait for instructions. The closest assembly point uh, is the children's crèche, but from the opposite direction you can hear shouting and loud popping noises. Gunfire! Is the colony under attack? So we can hide in the crèche, or if we had Bravery 5, we could help fight. We don't, so we're gonna go hide. Like we're supposed to. You find Dis in the crèche and join him in hiding under the arts and crafts table. The lights are dim. You scared? He asks quietly. Uh, nod silently. Dis shrugs. I thought I would be, but I'm not, he says. I'm not scared of stuff like this. You can't help but glance at the hollow projector on the wall, the one that electrocuted your classmate Tammy earlier this year. The glowing bear looms over the room, and for a moment looks more like a monster than a toy. You grew up here. It feels weird to be hiding here, like you're just little kids again. You hear more gunfire and yelling, but within half an hour, they play the all-clear tone. Chief Surveyor Tonin comes in to let you know it's all safe, now the lights come back on. You glance at the hologram teddy bear again. Tonin was Tammy's dad. How can he be sure it's safe? How can he be sure anything is safe? You're relieved when your parents arrive with an ashen-faced cow. They won't talk about what happened at Geoponics. After two weeks of darkness, the blue sun barely skimming the horizon, it begins to move higher in the sky, and, ret and daytime returns. The council admits they don't know how the gates were opened, or how the creatures got in. Some of the attacking creatures were once thought to be docile. Others were species nobody had seen before. It was like something had driven them to assault the colony. At least, nobody was killed. This time. Childhood is fleeting. The game will end when you reach age 20, so you should focus on a few skills to improve and friends to spend time with. Use the skills and friends button at the top left of the screen to keep track of them. Good luck. So this last year, we can see that these are all the cards we earned. We gained 59 kudos, gained 50 stress, gained 20 loyalty to the colony, several, you know, some amount of friendship with people, 
and all these various skills. And now we are ready to start age 11.